In this short video, I'll take you through this technique which we call the inverse transform method. This technique comes under this chapter of Monte Carlo simulations, something which we encounter in FRM part 1. But then in FRM part 1, this technique does not find itself a dedicated learning objective. But this technique is still relevant because it finds application in FRM part 2 when we deal with simulations in interest rate models. What is the objective? The objective that we have in front of us is to study a technique that can help us simulate various realizations of a random variable, but it's given that this random variable has a specified distribution. So the realizations or simulations should obey or respect that distribution. Okay. Now what we'll do is that we will tackle this technique of inverse transform using two cases, the case of a continuous variable and the case of a discrete variable. So let's begin with the continuous variable first. I am given my random variable, let's denote it by uppercase x. So that's the convention that we'll be following, uppercase for a random variable and lowercase for one particular value or realization of this random variable. I'm also given the PDF or the probability density function of my random variable. And as will be clear very soon, I'll be working with two random variables and hence I need to qualify my PDF or the CDF with a subscript, which clearly denotes which random variable is this for, okay? Now I am assuming that this X, which I want to simulate, its value lies in this interval from X low or XL to a XH, which is my highest value, okay? Now I can convert my PDF to an, an equivalent CDF, Let's denote the CDF with an uh, uppercase letter F and as we did for the PDF, I'll qualify it with X, okay? What is the CDF? It's something, it's a function which gives me the probability that my random variable lies to the left of a stated value lowercase x. I can find this probability as I do for any continuous variable by finding the area under the PDF and in this case, the area is from the lowest possible value which x can take right up till the stated value for which I need to find this CDF. This CDF, because it's a probability number, I know that it will be between 0 and 1, both inclusive. Okay. Now, let's start off with a graphical depiction of this CDF and let's try and then understand what this inverse transform method is all about. If you were to plot the CDF, then what do we observe from it? The first thing that we observe is something which we've already noted and that is the CDF lies between 0 and 1. 0 happens when x is, you know, in the vicinity of or let's say asymptotically close to its lowest possible value, xl, and 1 happens when x is in the vicinity of or getting closer to its highest possible value xh, okay? Now, the other thing, and that is an important thing here in this, you know, in this context of the inverse transform method, and that is the CDF is an increasing kind of a function. It's a non-decreasing function. That means that if you start from its lowest possible value zero till one, it never decreases at any stage. It might have flat regions where it fails to increase, but it never decreases. The reason for that is that we impose this condition on the PDF that it'll always be a number which is greater than or equal to zero, okay? And if the CDF is like an area under the PDF and the PDF never dips below zero and therefore the CDF cannot decrease, okay? Now, what does the CDF graphically mean? The CDF graphically means it's a function and therefore to get that value which is denoted by fx, it's like you start from the horizontal axis for a chosen value of x, move vertically up right up until this point on the CDF which is this guy and then take a look at what this point overlooks on the vertical axis and that number is the probability number you are after. In this 
that naming convention of ours, let's put that probability number as lowercase u. Okay. Now, this what I've just said, you can mathematically write it as this. It will be f of x is u. Okay. Now, what if I were to do things in reverse? That means, what if instead of starting from a number on the horizontal axis, which was the x, what if I start with a number on the vertical axis, which is the u, okay? That means what if I start from this number, this level on the vertical axis, move horizontally till I reach my CDF curve and then try and find out what number on the horizontal axis does this point overlook, okay? So in this, what I have done is I have started with a u and ended up with a, an x. And if you were to get back to our objective statement, this somehow seems to be doing what we wanted. It's kind of telling us some value of x, okay? And that x corresponds to some starting point u on the vertical axis. Now let's assume this or let's imagine this. What if this starting point on the vertical axis was randomly chosen? I could have begun my journey at any point on this vertical axis. What if I further assume that this point on the vertical axis has an equal probability of being in any tiny sub-interval on this vertical axis, which goes from 0 to 1, okay? Mathematically speaking, this statement which I just made is basically stating this assumption and that is the u which is my starting point is a uniformly distributed random variable between 0 and 1. Okay, So I pick a u which is on this vertical axis, it can be anywhere on this axis, I don't have any preferences so to say and then I move horizontally and find out the point which this u based on the CDF curve overlooks on the horizontal axis. It's like saying, mathematically speaking, that I have taken in my CDF, inverted it, and I found the inverse CDF, that's why it's called inverse transform, pumped in a value of u into it, and the inverse CDF, it spits out a value of x, okay? Now, this is written for a specific value of u, and therefore a specific value of x that comes out as a result. What if I were to make this relation more generic? That means I replace this lowercase u with an uppercase u. That means I move from a realization to a general random variable. That means I say that this u is like a random choice of my starting point and I finally round up with then a a random number on the horizontal axis and this is the rule which I'll be using to simulate various realizations of x okay u is random and so is x now let's do this well it looks good on paper but let's see if mathematically speaking x if it was simulated using this relationship if it indeed does satisfy the CDF that we are given to begin with, okay? To do that, let's do this. Let's find out the CDF of this X, which is generated using a randomly chosen U. To find out the CDF, let's start from the definition of CDF, and that is, it's the probability that X lies to the left of a certain number X, a certain realization X. Just substitute this formula in place of x. That's what I've done here. I've substituted fx inverse u instead of x. And then in this fx inverse u less than equal to x, do this. Take fx of both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, okay? What is the left-hand side then? It will be the fx of fx inverse 
of u okay and if fx inverse is indeed the inverse function of this fx then in layman's terms this and this cancels and what you are left with is u that means this probability is actually the same as this probability the probability that the uniformly distributed u is less than or equal to the fx corresponding to a stated x okay the cdf corresponding to a stated x now go back to distributions chapter remember this u is a uniformly distributed random variable its pdf would look something like this remember its limits between 0 and 1 how would its cdf look like it will start from 0 at 0 and it will land at 1 at 1 okay the second thing is it's a linear cdf the third thing is that its formula is given as f now see i am subscripting this f with a u because it's the cdf of u f of u at any realization u will be given by u minus the lower limit which is zero that divided by upper limit minus the lower limit and that gives you u okay so cdf of u is simply the the u at which you will you want to find the cdf okay this probability that you are after is indeed cdf why because it's probability of this random variable lying to the left of a stated value so all i have to do is push this into the cdf of u and that is equal to u itself and therefore this probability really does come out to be fx of x so indeed what we've done is we have proved that the cdf of x which has been simulated using the inverse transform method is indeed the cdf which we wanted for this x okay now let's do a quick example so in this example i am given a continuous random variable its pdf is given to be this the interval in which x can lie is given to be this now let's convert the pdf first to a cdf just integrate from 0 to x 2 by 9 of x and you get the cdf as this then let's invert this cdf by invert i mean set this to be equal to probability let's denote probability by u and solve for x in terms of u that means x square comes out to be 9u and x comes to plus or minus 3 under root u but x can't be negative it can only be between 0 and 3 and hence i write it as 3 square root of u okay so this is my inverse cdf okay let's try it out that means let's simulate a value of u let's say i do it using excel i can very easily do it using the rand function in excel it throws at me a simulated value of a uniformly distributed random variable between 0 and 1 okay so let's assume that excel returned back point 343 i push this into this formula and it gives me back the x which is 1.7569 keep changing the u and what you get is a new realized or simulated value of x now this was about what the inverse transform method has for us in the continuous variable case now let me ask you this question what can be the case when this inverse transform method might not really work now the method might not work if one of the conditions that we've talked about is not satisfied go back to the conditions which we mentioned for the cdf we said the cdf is a non-decreasing function it can have flat regions but it cannot decrease now flat regions can pose a problem let's assume that i'm working with this toy example it's an example in which my random variable can lie in any value between 10 to 20 or 30 to 40 it can't be between 20 and 30 in between 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 it's like it's uniformly distributed and the pdf is given by 1 by 20 okay now what will the cdf look like it will start from 0 at 10 it will reach 0.5 when you are at 20 then it will remain flat between 20 and 30 and then it will again start rising and reach 1 by the time you reach 40. now if you were to do that method which we talked about and that was starting at any point on the vertical axis 
moving horizontally till you hit the CDF curve or CDF plot of the CDF and find out what value do you overlook on the horizontal axis. This might work unless you choose u equal to 0.5. If you choose u equal to 0.5, that means you land somewhere here, you have infinite values now which overlook the horizontal axis and hence you have a problem. Okay, So this was one case where the inverse transform method might not work and you will have to find out ways to you know resolve this conflict okay now let's move on to our second case our second case is that of a discrete variable let's assume x is my discrete variable it can take in values x1 x2 all the way till you know i'm not bounding it anyway the probability of each of these realizations is given to you let's say probability of x equal to xi i denoted by pi in the case of discrete variables, remember, we refer this as the PMF, the probability mass function. I can convert this to an equivalent CDF and that will be again denoted by F. Let's call it Fx. And it will be just be the sum of the probabilities of all realizations of X which are less than or equal to this X. This is wrong. So this will be Xi less than or equal to X. So in the case of discrete variables, when you plot this CDF, you won't get a smooth curve the way we had it for a continuous variable, but rather you would have these points, but the behavior is the same. The behavior is that you start off somewhere in the vicinity of zero and you finally land up at one, okay? And then you also have this behavior that these points, they show somewhat like an increasing kind of a behavior, okay? Now, do the same thing, start from any point on the vertical axis, move horizontally till you reach the CDF plot and then take a look at what value are you overlooking on the horizontal axis. The problem here is that you can very easily pick a U such that you won't hit the CDF plot at all because see for this choice of U, there is no corresponding point on this CDF plot. So what do we do? So what we do is that in this case, pick the point which is let's say just on the right of the hypothetical point that you are hitting. You are hitting this hypothetical point. The point to its right is this guy and this guy is what I will pick as my realized value of x. Mathematically speaking, it's like saying this is the relation which I will be following. I'll be picking that xi such that it's the minimum value of or minimum realization of x at which the CDF just for the first time becomes greater than the chosen or simulated value of u. Let's take an example. So let's assume that x can take in values 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4. The PMF of, you know, of all these values are 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.1. I can convert the PMF to a CDF that will come out to be 0.1. 0.1 plus 0.2 which is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3, 0 0.6 and so on. So if Excel gave you a simulated value of u to be 0 0.456, that 0 0.456 lies let's say in between these two and I'll be picking the right value, the value on the right which is 2. Okay. So corresponding to the choice of or, or simulated value of u to be 0.456, my simulated value of x is then 2, okay? So this was the inverse transform method and we've done it for both a continuous variable and a discrete variable. Just remember this as a method in which I start off with u, which is a uniformly distributed random variable between 0 and 1 and I push this u into the inverse of my stated CDF. If the CDF is given to me, that means my random variable is supposed to follow that CDF. Try and find the inverse of that CDF, push that U into the inverse and what it spits out is a realized or a simulated value of your targeted, your, your target random variable. Okay, keep changing the U and what you see is the x keeps changing and that x we have checked is designed to follow the stated CDF. Okay, so this was 
a quick video on the inverse transform method.